So unity and harmony. We kind of bunch them together just because they're pretty similar when it comes to their definitions and what they are. So our friend Google states that unity is the overall cohesiveness of a composition that's been created with the elements of art. And it's also considered the most important principle. Your unity is what makes your artwork feel cohesive. Your unity is what makes things come together, basically. <laughs> and repetition is how you get unity. Unity comes from repeating things over and over, right? Because then it feels like it's all within the same subject matter. All feels really nice. Let's talk a bit about harmony as well. So it uses the elements of art to emphasize the similar parts of different things, right? It's like maybe things are the same color, maybe things are the same texture, stuff like that. Maybe if you have like a truck next to a person, they're clearly not the same object, but maybe the person's wearing like a red shirt, the truck is red, right? That causes a bit of harmony, causes a bit of unity, right? So it creates togetherness through difference of objects, right? So unity is the what and harmony is the how. What do you need within your piece? You need unity. And, and that's like you use to make the whole piece seem like it's put together. However, harmony is how you do that. You need to find similar things that echo within each item that you have within your piece in order for them to feel cohesive and unified. So unity is the what and harmony is the how, but there is no simple recipe to create unity or harmony. And you must use the context of your art piece to create unity in a unique way. Every single piece will have a different thing that connects it with unity. Because if you have too much unity, then it makes your entire piece feel very flat, makes it feel very one dimensional, doesn't have any interest to it, right? So variety is what you need in order to create that visual interest to make people look at your piece and go, oh, that's interesting. That's really cool to look at. Let's talk about some different examples of unity and harmony. In relation to the <laughs> principles of design, how do you make the elements of art look good? It's with the principles of design. So. Let's talk about unity and harmony with color and value. So your color and value with unity and harmony deals with palettes and schemes, palettes and color schemes. Unity can be achieved with just one color, but harmony is created with a good color scheme. So you can have unity by, let's say we just had like got a bunch of people in the middle of the ocean, right? So then everybody's colored blue. You got different kinds of, you just got a bunch of blue. That's all blue, it's unified for sure, but it's kind of boring. So your harmony can be created with a good color scheme. Maybe we can make this palette triadic instead. So instead of the people being all blue, maybe we can use yellow and red, right? A little bit of white in there, and that can make it a nice, more modern, contemporary triadic palette. Harmony is used to create variety, right? So you could have like, let's say we had this scheme. So that's still good. It works, right? It works, there's nothing wrong with it. But let's say if we started from monochromatic, is there anything wrong with this one? No, you can absolutely use that, right? But this feels better. Then it'd be even stronger if you had a single splash of yellow in there. So this piece is from Picasso's Rose period. And this period is when Picasso started to use a lot of cheerful and warm colors compared to the blue period, which was prior to his rose period. Rose period was when he started to use a lot of reds, use a lot of oranges, use a lot of yellows, pinks, right? It felt very rosy and that's why it's called the rose period. So he used a lot of warm colors. And in this case, he used an orange underpainting to make the piece feel more warm. What's interesting as well, is that this entire piece feels very, very warm, not just because of the orange underpainting, not just because of the majority of the warm colors being used, but what we will be talking about instead is color association. So because this entire piece is very, very orange, very, very warm, even though blue, this blue over here, these blues over here are colder colors, because they're next to a lot of warmer colors, they feel warm by comparison. Okay, unity through texture is basically just similar or the same textures used within a piece to create a sense of unity. So if we have, say everything is rough within a piece, that's unity. Say everything is smooth within a piece, that's unity. Obviously you're gonna have some differentiating things within there to create more variety, but in, in general, if it's all pretty similar, that's a similar texture, right? It can be as simple as the texture of the canvas. Perhaps it's like just a portrait of a person and you don't really have any physical textures on there other than the texture of the canvas. And that overarching texture of the canvas or your paper behind it creates a sense of unity through texture because everything has that similar texture. It's why some digital artists use a texture overlay, right? Sometimes you'll see digital artworks and they'll, their final step will be to find a more crumpled sheet of paper or a kind of like gritty texture, like paper texture that they put on top of their artwork. And they can switch that to an overlay and that'll give their entire piece that texture, which is what 
they want sometimes and it gives a nice sense of unity when it brings everything back together Right, so it could be with physical materials. Maybe if you have a more collagey artist, maybe they use a bunch of eggshells, maybe they use plastic, right? That's a more physical material that can create that unity through texture. Um, you can have implied texture. Maybe you're just drawing that texture right on there or digitally, right? Maybe you're just digitally adding that texture on there. Or it can be with physical techniques if you think about paints. So this is a carved detail from the Oseberg Wagon, which is Viking art from year 800. But this is a very literal type of unity, right? The natural differences within the wood, however, create our harmony and variety. So unity and harmony with shape or form, very similar to the other ones. Unity within your shape and form is a similar use of shapes and forms to create a sense of unity. And it tends to be popular because of how obvious it is. You know, you, you look at an art piece first, what do you notice? first it's the objects <laughs> that are within the piece right if it's like a, if you have a person there you notice the person first if you like a pattern you notice the pattern first you notice your shapes and forms first before everything else right because of silhouettes and all that fun jazz so um unity with shapes and forms tends to be the most popular one to use especially with more contemporary art because of how obvious it is upon first glance so the use of the same shapes and forms over and over can become boring and repetitive. If you use nothing but circles within a piece, right, maybe it's abstract, but like, if you're just using circles, yes, or you're creating unity, but man, it's boring. <laughs> you're not really doing much with them. However, use of grounded or sharp edges or creating similarities out oh, within different forms creates harmony. It's better to use different elements and create similarities within different forms because that will create your harmony. The ancient artwork we're going to be using for this one is the Aztec Sunstone. The Aztec Sunstone was discovered around the 1700s. They estimate that it was made in the 1400s. Aztec artwork in general is known to be very, very geometric. So there's a lot of precise, sharp edges with very geometric curves interspersed, right? You notice within this design, if I kind of zoom in as much as I can, you'll notice a lot of very harsh, um, very sharp, precise edges, and everything that's rounded is still very geometric. It's incredible how circular this is, right? These curves that create this V, right? But it has a very distinct look, right? So you can always tell when something looks Mayan or Aztec because of its signature use of shapes and forms. So the last one we are going to be talking about is unity and harmony through line. So it can be with implied line or actual line. So with an actual line, it's usually similar line weights, usually similar style. If we have very similar kind of line weight throughout the whole thing, that also creates unity. Using a variety of lines, that creates harmony. But in a more implied sense, you can have similar leading lines. Maybe everything is leading towards one place. You can have similar leading lines with movement. If you want the highlight video, it's in our YouTube channel. I can zoom in on this one so you can kind of see how beautiful this line work is. It is incredibly intricate. It's a very strong lining style. Overall, it's very, very clean. It has a bit of a wobblier look to it, which is a bit hard to explain, but it has a very traditional kind of look. You can see some of the, this is ink wash, so it doesn't look like it's traditionally done. If you kind of zoom in here, you can actually see some of the overflow from some of the ink wash. Over here, you can see a little bit right there. It still has that somewhat rough traditional look, but it creates that sense of unity through that rough look. And we're going to be working with a mostly dark palette. I want to kind of work with something more analogous. All right. So the final illustration for today. So we're going to be continuing with that Kirby theme. But uh, if you know anything about Kirby, then you know that Kirby bosses are a little bit messed up. So I'm going to be working with Marks today, who's my favorite boss of all time. I think with Unity is that it's not as like obvious or, or it's like not as easy to literally show compared to say like variety, balance anything like that. A unified piece is you got to use everything at once. So it's like if we focus on one thing, it's going to have unity or variety within the other elements as well. So it's a bit tough to kind of show as one big thing. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon. I do really want to keep the, the color of this inside, so, which is like a bright like turquoise which is why I'm working with mostly, I'm working with analogous as well as a bit of monochromes because I want that turquoise in there. <laughs> It'll give a nice focal point to the whole thing. What I'm doing because I'm changing the color scheme entirely 
is that I am instead taking the value of each of the original colors and trying to match them to the, or the warmth of each of the original colors and try to match them to um, this new palette, right? So the the bow is more warm, but I'm not gonna work with the warmth in that one. Um, the shoes are about the same value as the hat, um, as in the blue side of the hat. So I'm matching the value of that to try and kind of let it ring the same. The wings, however, are about the same value as the body. A little bit warmer though, and I want a difference in tone, or a difference in hues. So I'm gonna actually switch this a little bit. I want it to be bright though. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of just blocking out everything. So that means is I'm just kind of figuring out where all I want all of my values to go, where I want all my color to go. Currently, I'm just trying to figure out all my bounce light, what kind of light I want happening. So I'm going with kind of a blue light. Again, I'm keeping it majorly purple. I want that majorly purple kind of look. I'm picking up a lot of color from other areas on the painting. And what that helps with is it really helps bring the unity back in within the entire piece. It helps it feel unified because I'm using the same colors over and over, despite putting them in different places. If you liked what you saw, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload. Join our art community with the links down below. If you'd like to support the channel in the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon for working files, behind the scenes posts, and discounts on our class offerings. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.